Hey traders, in this lesson, we are going to be addressing one of the most uh, confusing issues in PineScript, which is repainting. Repainting is the boogeyman of PineScript and TradingView scripts. It is very misunderstood by beginner coders. And to be honest, in most cases, it's not that big of a deal. However, in certain situations, it can be misleading at best and downright inaccurate at worst. And in this video, I'm going to break down the various types of repainting, how to avoid them, and what repainting is. So let's get started by reading the PineScript user manual section on repainting. So if I scroll down here, there'll be a link to this below the video if you want to explore this in more detail. But TradingView, the staff and developers of TradingView define repainting as a script behavior causing historical versus real-time calculations or plots to behave differently. What they mean by differently is that your plots or real-time calculations will behave differently on historical bars versus real-time bars. A classic example of this is in this paragraph here. The RSI is a great example. On historical bars, the RSI is going to display a value, and that value will never change because it's confirmed, it's a historical bar, the bar's values are no longer fluctuating like a real-time bar would, and so the RSI's value, the calculations, the analysis that that indicator performs is set in stone and it is completed and will never change on historical bars. But on the current real-time bar on your chart that is still active, and if I jump over to trading view, I can show an example of this. Let me go down to the one minute chart and throw on the RSI indicator. Keep an eye on this line. You can see that it's moving around as the current real-time bar moves around. This is one form of repainting. It is literally repainting the indicator value for so long as this bar moves. And in a couple of seconds, when this bar closes, this bar is no longer repainting, but the current new bar is. And so this line will continue to move up and down. That is one form of repainting and it is perfectly acceptable. If you know how to trade using indicators, you should know that if you are basing your trading decisions on indicator values or even price action patterns, you need to wait until the candle closes or the bar closes and confirms that value before you act on it. So if an RSI goes overbought, for example, on the real-time bar, and that is a signal to inform a trading decision, you shouldn't make that trading decision until the bar closes because there is still a chance that it may not close as overbought and it may move down before the candle close. Same with candlestick patterns. If you're trading a candlestick pattern like a bearish engulfing candle is a good example, uh, just because the bar is currently engulfing a previous bar doesn't mean it will look like that when the candle closes because as you can see here, the price is moving quite rapidly and depending on the time frame you're on, uh, the pattern may be invalidated by the time the candle closes. So that is one form of repainting. Repainting on the current active bar is completely acceptable as long as you understand what it is and you understand that your trading decisions should not be made on the real-time bar until it closes. One hidden risk of this form of repainting that you might not think about is when you're creating your scripts, let's say, for example, you want to automate a strategy and when a setup is detected on your chart, you want to trigger an alert to enter a position. You might write your code and the code may look fine, it might execute perfectly fine on historical data, but on the real-time bar, as soon as a setup or an indicator value hits a certain um, condition that you're looking for and your script generates an alert, depending on how you set up your alert in the settings menu, in terms of these options here, may cause problems. So for example, this is a terrible, terrible strategy in real life, uh, but just for example purposes, let's imagine that as soon as the RSI goes overbought, you send a command to a third party to go short on a market. Well, if you set your options here to only once, once per bar, or once per minute, then the very moment that uh, the RSI goes overbought, the TradingView platform will trigger the alert and your command will be sent off to the third party and your um, broker will enter short or your exchange on a cryptocurrency market. And now you're short on a market because the RSI went overbought. And then a few minutes later, the candle closes and it's no longer overbought. And suddenly you are involved in an invalid setup, an invalid trade that you were not supposed to be in because the RSI did not 
actually close and confirm as overbought. That is one potential issue with repainting. Um, another issue would be candlestick patterns. Like I just explained earlier, if a bar is plotting as a valid candlestick pattern on the real-time bar, but then it closes as invalid, if you don't set up your script properly or your alerts properly, then the um, alert may fire prematurely. And that can be a problem, obviously, because that's how you end up involved in invalid trades. It's exactly the same as entering positions manually before the current bar closes and then being caught in a trade you're not supposed to be in. Your scripts can do the same thing if you're not careful. Now, there are a couple of ways around this. The first way is to set your alerts up so that the script only fires the alert once per bar close. The other way to avoid this is to use the bar states um, in built variable. So I have a script here that we'll get into in a moment where we'll explore some of the various types of repainting. But if you want to prevent your script from sending an alert on a real-time bar, you could do something like this. Let's say we have valid short entry equals, and then we have a bunch of conditions, candlestick patterns, indicator conditions. And when this is true, our script enters short. What you can do is when your alert is fired, you can do something like this. If we have a valid short entry, then we want to fire our alert, which sends data to third party. The way we stop this alert from being fired on a real sign bar is we add on the end here, if valid short entry and bar state dot is confirmed. Now this will only fire our alert on the very final tick of a closing bar. So it will not fire any alert unless the pattern the indicator values, whatever our script is analyzing and calculating is confirmed on the final tick of a closing bar. That is one way to prevent the issues of repainting that I just discussed. And to be honest, this is probably the preferred way because that prevents any users of your script from accidentally setting the alerts up incorrectly because even if you set your alert to once per bar or only once or once per minute, if you have this check in your script, the alert will not fire until this is confirmed, Boolean is true on the final tick of the current real-time bar. Anyway, that is the most basic form of repainting. It's an acceptable form of repainting, but you do need to be aware of it. You need to be cautious of the potential side effects that it can cause. Let's get into some visual examples of repainting. I'm going to comment out all of my plots here, except for the first two here. I'm going to save my script. So let me explain what the code is doing here. Let's only focus on, um, let me put in some curly braces here and we can minimize these bits of code and just focus on this block of code here, our ATR repainting code. And if you're not aware of what I just did here, if you put in some curly brackets in comments around your code, so we have a curly bracket here, open curly bracket and close curly bracket, you can actually click on this little drop down arrow thing here, which will hide that block of code, which is really handy when working with complex scripts with lots of sections. But anyway, let me open up this ATR repainting code and explain what's happening here. So I have a user input here called disable repaint. And when we turn this on, it's off by default. When we turn this on, our disable repaint code will be executed instead of our real time code, which is going to repaint. So first of all, we're getting an ATR value here. And then we're just plotting a long stop and a short trailing stop, which is the closing price minus the ATR value and the closing price plus an ATR value. So if I minimize this and we zoom in a bit, let me get rid of the RSI. Keep an eye on our red and green lines. Notice that they are moving with the real-time bar. Now, the reason why these lines are moving like this is because as the current real-time bar moves, the ATR value is changing. So if I throw on the average true range, you can see that on the real-time bar, it is going to move as price expands and contracts. Now, because we're on a one minute chart and we're averaging the past 14 bars, and there's not a lot of volatility right now, this number is not changing. But if this bar was moving more dramatically, this line would be moving, our ATR value would be moving. And there we go, it's starting to move now. And because we're adding the ATR and subtracting it from the current closing price, our lines are moving with the closing price and as the ATR value changes. If you do not want this behavior in your script, what you need to do is reference the previous bar if we are calculating on a real-time bar. So if we're calculating on a historical bar, the values are confirmed 
and we can calculate our trailing stop or whatever we're doing uh, based on that historical bar's values. But on the real-time bar, we cannot do that because the values are changing actively. What we need to do is reference the previous bar. And so the way we achieve that is using the bar state dot is confirmed variable. So here I have a ternary condition or ternary operator for our long stop and short stop. We're saying is disabled repaint turned on? If so, then we check is the bar state confirmed? If it is, then we just subtract the ATR from the closing price or add the ATR to the closing price. Otherwise, if bar state is not confirmed, then we reference the previous closing price and the previous ATR value because these values are confirmed as the previous bar is a historical bar. It's closed, it's completed. So if I open up my little settings menu here and turn on disable repainting, keep an eye on our green and red lines. They now are referencing the previous bars close and adding the ATR and subtracting the ATR from that value and the lines are not moving on the current bar. And just notice there that the um, real-time bar closed and our lines moved. Now we're referencing this bar on the current real-time bar. So the script is detecting that this bar is active and referencing the previous bars close and ATR value for this real-time bar. That is one way to disable repainting uh, when we're dealing with actual visual repainting on our chart. Let's have a look at a couple of other examples. Let me comment out these plots and open up this section and I'll minimize that. Now we have signal repainting. So we just looked at the ATR repainting. That's a form of indicator repainting. Now let's look at the second form of repainting, which is when we are detecting a uh, candlestick pattern on our chart. So let me uncomment these two plot shapes, save my code. And now our ATR should go away, but we're getting arrows drawing on uh, higher close and lower close candles. So whenever the current bar closes higher than the previous high, or the current bar closes lower than the previous low, we are drawing a green and red arrow above and below price action. So if I open up my settings and turn off disable repainting, keep an eye on this current bar when it exceeds the previous bar's high or low. It should start drawing an arrow even though the current bar hasn't closed yet. So I'll wait here until we get an example. And there we go. See how the arrow just popped up and then it disappeared and now it's back again? That is signal repainting. And if we had an alert set on this script to send an alert or fire an alert whenever this pattern is detected, if we didn't set up our alerts correctly or we didn't use bar state that is confirmed in our code, when this arrow first popped up, it would have fired an alert. So now our signal is confirmed. If I turn on disable repainting, this arrow should stay here. But if I turn it back off and this bar exceeds the previous bars low or high, we'll get an arrow drawing onto our chart. So how do we prevent this from happening if we don't want our signals repainting? Well, it's exactly the same as our indicator repainting solution, which is using bar state that is confirmed. So here for our long entry and short entry, I'm detecting high close and lower close candles. And I'm checking, is the current bar confirmed or do we not have disable repaint turned on? So right now I've turned repaint off. So if bar state is not confirmed and we do not have repainting turned off, then our signal is free to draw onto our chart. But if I disable repainting, now the current bar must be confirmed before we draw our long and short entry shapes. Or in other words, before long entry and short entry can be set to true, bar state must be confirmed. So that is one solution to uh, signal repainting. If you want your signals to paint on the real-time bar, but you don't want your alerts to fire, that is where the uh, once per bar close alert setting comes in handy. This way you can leave your indicator repainting so that you get your setup drawing on the real-time bar. Maybe it draws your stops and targets. That way you can get an idea of what your setup might look like when the candle eventually closes. You can throw on your short position tool or long position tool, calculate your stop loss um, to get an, a rough idea of whether or not you can enter the trade based on how far away your stop loss is and your target. 
but you do not enter your trade, you do not execute on that signal until the bar actually closes and is confirmed. So there are some trading uh, scripts, some indicators I've created that I trade on a real-time bar uh, in intraday day trading strategies. And I leave my stops and targets drawing onto my chart, but I do not enter my order and send my trade order until the bar closes and is confirmed so that I know my stops and targets are confirmed. So that is the second form of repainting. We have indicator repainting. We have candlestick pattern signal repainting. For indicator repainting, that's usually normal. Most indicators repaint. And as I've mentioned several times, you shouldn't act on that current repainting value until the bar is closed. Same for signal repainting when we're detecting market conditions, candlestick patterns, etc. You may want your script to repaint. You may want the signal to come and go based on what the real-time bar is doing, but you should not act on it and you should not send your alert to any third parties or anything like that until the bar is confirmed. So keep that in mind for those two forms of repainting. The final form of repainting is the security function. This is the most complex form and the most dangerous form in terms of misleading results in your real-time scripts versus your historical data. So let me save this code. We'll get rid of our signal and ATR repainting code. And let's have a look at the security function repainting. So I've already discussed this issue in previous lessons, especially the breakout strategy, I believe, where we were drawing the daily high and low onto our chart. We needed to disable repainting in that script. What you see here is, let me go to a four hour chart. So price action is a little bit closer. What you see here is repainting occurring. So right now we are getting the daily closing price and we are adding and subtracting the daily ATR from that daily closing price. So we're doing exactly the same thing as our ATR repainting code, but using the security function to reference the daily chart instead of our um, current time frame. And as you can see here, these lines tick up here on the current real-time bar. So if I hover my mouse over this real-time bar, keep an eye on our values up here. They are changing uh, only a little bit each time, but they are changing, they are repainting. That is because the market is currently live, it's currently open and actively trading, and our daily candle is still moving around. The daily candle close on today's bar is not confirmed, it's real time. So what we need to do in order to fix repainting using the security function is the same way we fixed repainting on this ATR plot on our current time frame. We need to use the bar state dot is real time check. So there are two ways we could do this. We could say bar state dot is confirmed question mark, then reference zero, otherwise reference one. So what this code here would do is it would check, do we have disabled repaint on in the settings menu? And is the current bar confirmed? If so, that means it's a historical bar and we are safe to reference that historical bar's value. So we just pass in zero, the current bar. Otherwise, if the current bar is not confirmed, then we want to reference the previous day's bar and not the currently active bar. We want to get yesterday's closing price and yesterday's ATR value from that higher time frame using the security function. So there are two different ways we can do this. I've got them both written out here. The first one is to check if the bar is confirmed. The second one is to just check if the current bar is real time. As far as I know, it doesn't really matter which one you use. You can use both of these methods and they should work the same. Uh, I tend to prefer this version. I'm not sure why. I just like is confirmed. That's just my preference. I like to be consistent in my scripts. And so this is how I like to write it out. And so now if I save my code and minimize my editor, let's keep an eye on these values here. If I hover my mouse over the current real-time bar, also keep an eye up there. If I open up the settings menu and turn on disable repainting so that we are now checking the bar state dot is confirmed inbuilt condition variable, even though price is moving on the current bar, our indicator values are not moving because we are no longer repainting. We are referencing yesterday's bar on the real-time bar. And once the daily bar closes on this market, our security function code will reference that day's bar. And when tomorrow's trading begins, the whole process will repeat. And so it's basically the same solution for all of these examples of repainting. All you need is this code here. If I get rid of my little settings menu condition, this is what your code needs to look like if you want to avoid 
repainting on the current real-time bar. Whether you are using the security function, drawing a candlestick pattern, referencing an indicator value. If you do not want your indicator to repaint or update on a real-time bar, this is how you need to write your code out in order to prevent your script from updating on the current real-time bar and repainting. So those are the main three examples of visual repainting on your charts. The final thing I want to draw your attention to is when using the security function or any of the request um, namespace functions, so any of these uh, inbuilt functions here, there is the issue of referencing candlestick data that you should not have access to yet. So what, what I mean by that is if you set the setting look ahead to bar merge dot look ahead on, if I throw that onto my security functions and save my code and let's change some of this code. Let me get rid of the um, ATR and long stop short stop. Let's change this to just reference the higher time frame close and let me plot that onto the chart as green and save my code. So now we're drawing the previous day's closing price over today's price action. If I go out to the daily chart and let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at this big red bar right here. Let me put a vertical line on there and let me draw a line across the closing price value. So the close of this bar was 49241.12, 241.12. Uh, let me bring it to the front and let's drop down to a one hour time frame and zoom out. So here we are, this blue line indicates the beginning of that big red day. And you can see that we have this big sell off here, big wick to the downside. That is uh, this wick here. So if we drop down to that one hour time frame and we look at our white line, that is marking the closing price of that daily bar. If I delete that white line, have a look at our green line here. This green line is drawing across the exact same value as our white line. This is where that big red day closed. But notice that it is drawing over price action from the very start of that intraday session. So this blue line marks the start of that big red day. And our green line is drawing the closing price of that big red day. But it's drawing it over price action that occurred during that day. Or in other words, we are cheating. We are looking ahead to the close of, of this day before it was actually known to us. That's because I've set look ahead to on, bar merge dot look ahead on. By default, this is normally off, so you don't normally need to worry about this, but if you're ever dealing with a script that has look ahead turned on, beware of this issue. So for example, if you have a strategy that exits a trade, takes profit, for example, at a previous day's high or low, and you have look ahead turned on, then your script is going to have insanely profitable results because it's actually cheating. It knows where the current day's high is going to be before that bar had actually closed. If I set look ahead back to off, this uh, green line here will move to the next day, which is the day after this big red bar. So on this day here, we will draw this red bar's close across this day's price action, intraday price action, which is how it should be. So now if I turn look ahead back off and save my script, watch this green line. It's now moved to this day. And now on this big red day, we are referencing the previous day's close over that red day's intraday price action. Or in other words, we are not cheating anymore. We are not accessing data that we shouldn't have access to until after that trading session had closed or that bar had closed. Many traders on TradingView also refer to what I just showed you as repainting. Technically, it's not repainting. It's just a look ahead bias. It's kind of cheating. Um, but for whatever reason, the TradingView community does sometimes refer to this functionality of a script as repainting. And it's obviously a huge problem because it can lead to unrealistic results in your strategy scripts if you were using security data with look ahead turned on. So my advice would be to never turn look ahead on unless you have a very, very specific reason to. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there are some use cases for wanting look ahead on. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a feature in the first place. Uh, but your default stance in your coding should be to always leave this as off, which it is by default. So if you don't specify this at all, the script will 
uh, assume that you do not want to cheat in your security function and you only want to reference data that makes sense that you should have access to after that data has been confirmed by the bar closing. So now we're drawing this previous day's bar close over that big red bar if I drop out to the daily chart and we have a quick look. You can see that my white line is a little bit wonky, but it's right at that previous bar's close. We're drawing that white line over this big red day. That is fine. That's perfectly fine because on this big red day, we would obviously have access to the previous day's close. What we don't have access to is this big red day's close until this bar. So that's a crash course in repainting, how to avoid it, why it can be dangerous, and why sometimes it's not dangerous at all, like with our indicator repainting. Sometimes you want the RSI to update in real time. Other times you may not want this to happen, or at least you may not want your script to act on this value until after this value is confirmed. The way you do that is using our bar state that is confirmed check along with whatever candlestick pattern you're detecting, whatever indicator value you are interacting with, or whatever security function um, expression you are passing in, whatever data you're trying to get from your higher time frame or your other market. Anyway, that will do it for today's lesson. I'll leave the source code to this example script below so that you can have a look through it, study it, and get very familiar with repainting, how to avoid it. It's very important that you understand when this happens in your scripts, when it can be a problem, and how to eliminate it when you don't want it to be a behavior of your script. I hope you found this lesson interesting. It's a slightly edited lesson straight out of my PineScript Mastery course. If you want to learn more about PineScript and some of the more advanced features of PineScript and have someone guide you through learning this language, head over to pinescriptmastery.com to check out my free basics course if you're new to PineScript. And if you want to really level up your coding, I'm sure you will find the mastery course to be extremely helpful. Dozens of traders have left great reviews about the course. It's helped many of them really take their trading to the next level. And if you're not interested in the mastery course, at least make sure to hit that subscribe button because I will definitely be back very soon with more free YouTube lessons on this subject material. Good luck with your trading, good luck with your coding, and I'll speak with you in the next video.